On behalf of the Gospel Wholesale to Bill, we want to welcome you to today's broadcast of Moments with Truth. The Lord Jesus Christ came into this world and he was given a name. That name was Jesus, which means Savior. But the Lord Jesus Christ eventually revealed that he came to save. He came to give life. He did not come to destroy life. Jesus Christ, who is highly exalted at the Father's right hand, the one who is crowned with glory and with honor, the one who was and is the stone which the builders have rejected, he is the only Savior. Jesus came to earth to offer himself as God's Passover lamb. In dying, he has become our Passover. He has become our deliverer. We are trusting that as you listen to the word of God, that you will receive a blessing. A pleasant good morning, a pleasant good day to everyone in this island, everyone in this great nation, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, everyone in the Caribbean, and everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth on the World Wide Web. We greet you in the highest name that we know, the highest name that we own, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity that he has given us again to enter into your homes with this program, Moments with Truth. We thank you, we thank you very much for putting aside your busy schedule and for sitting comfortably and happily in your homes to hear this sweet message, the gospel of the wonderful grace of God. And we trust and believe and know that our time together will be for the glory of God, for the profit of everyone who sits and listens. And we trust that those who are not saved will be saved. Backsliders will be restored and the bowels of God's people will be refreshed. So again, we say to you, thank you very much and may God continue to bless you. Before we open the word of God, we shall seek the Lord's face in prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It is with reverence and with godly fear that we approach thee humbly and graciously in the name of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank thee for him. There is none like him. He is the one who is highly exalted at the Father's right hand. We know according to thy word that there was a time when he was rejected, when he was refused, when he was crowned with thorns. But Father, we thank thee this afternoon. We thank thee today as we are speaking. There sits a real man, the God man, at the Father's right hand, and he's crowned with glory and with honor. Thou hast given him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, <clears throat> every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So as we exalt him through the reading of thy word, and through the preaching of the gospel, we look to thee for thy help, we look to thee for thy blessing, that thy name will be glorified. Father, we are praying for those who are not saved. We are praying that thou will save them. Those, Father, again, who are backslidden, we are praying that thou wilt restore them to thyself. We are praying, Father, very graciously for those who are walking with thee, strengthen them, and build them up in their most holy faith. Again, we thank thee for this program, Moments with Truth. We thank thee for this station. We thank thee for the management. We thank thee for the team. We thank thee for everyone who functions and pray that thou wilt bless them and their families and continue, Lord, to make them a blessing. Remember those who are not well, Father, raise them up and restore to a sense of good health and strength. And for those who have lost loved ones, Father, comfort them with the comfort that comes only from thee. We ask these things with our thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, I would like us to turn place to the gospel according to St. John. St. John's gospel, chapter 11, and we shall read from verse 49. The gospel according to St. John, chapter 11, and we shall begin at verse 49. The word of God says, And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Now consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. 
And this spoke he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. We trust and we know that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts and help us in declaring same for Christ's sake. Amen. Today I would like us to consider as our subject, as our theme, something expedient. Something expedient. That's our subject, that's our topic, that's our theme for today's broadcast. Something expedient. When we speak about something being expedient, it is found in one of the verses from which we have read. And it is stated clearly in verse 50 of John's Gospel, chapter 11. The Word of God says, Caiaphas was speaking, Now consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. It is expedient. Something expedient. Something fitting. Something advisable. Something suitable. Something profitable. Caiaphas was telling those religious people, he was telling them something that was profitable, something that was fitting, something that was suitable, something that was advisable. What was this thing that was expedient? Notice what, what this man Caiaphas said. He said that one man should die for the people. One man should die for the people. Who is this man of whom he was speaking? Who is this man to whom he is making reference? Was he speaking of himself as he being the high priest that year? Of course not. Was he speaking of the others around him? Of course not. Was he speaking of an angel? Of course not. Was he speaking of the many, many people on this earth? Of course not. Of whom was he speaking? Well, the Bible tells us in another verse from which we have read it. John's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 51 tells us, And this spoke he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. So the person of whom he was speaking and the person to whom he was making reference was that lovely person and that lovely name, Jesus, Jehovah the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. The one who is said in the word of God and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This, of, this is the one of whom Caiaphas was speaking. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So we are speaking this morning, we are speaking today about something expedient, something fitting, something advisable, something suitable, something profitable. What is this something? I would like us to consider first of all, the death of one man. The death of one man. We want to make it very clear that Caiaphas was saying, one man has to die for Israel. One man has to die for the Gentiles. One man has to die for this entire world. And his name is Jesus. And friends, as we are speaking to you today, on this broadcast, Moments with Truth, we thank God today that this man has already died, has already paid the price. One man has died. Not two or three or four or five. One man has died. And he is the God man. He is the one who was 
and is and is to come. He is the one of whom Peter says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so as we shall consider this man, as we shall consider something expedient, we would like to say again, as we've stated earlier, the death of one man. As we, as we look at the death of this man, I would like us to also consider that the death of this man is cardinal. It's cardinal. It's fundamental. It's important. It is essential. It is primary. It goes to the root of the matter. And so this man Caiaphas was saying, this that is expedient, it goes to the root of the matter. It is fundamental. It is primary. It is essential. It is important. As he spoke to them about the death of one man. This death was and is and would always be cardinal, fundamental. Notice what this man Caiaphas said. That if this man did not die, the whole nation will perish. The whole nation will die. And so because of it being cardinal, I would like us to also view and muse a little. Without the death of this man, without the death of this one man, all will be tried by God at the white throne judgment. Every person in this island, every person in Trinidad and Tobago, every person in the Caribbean, every person in the world, if Jesus, this one man, the God man, if he did not suffer, bleed, die, if he did not rise from the dead, if he did not ascend to the Father's right hand and crown with glory and with honor, every soul will be tried by God, will be judged by God at the great white throne judgment. There is wrath to come. And God is saying if Jesus had not died, every sinner, every human being will stand before him at the great white throne judgment and he will judge them righteously and cast them into the lake of fire. So it is cardinal, the death of one man. It is cardinal and without it, all will be tried by God. All will be tried by him at the great white throne judgment. Not only would all be tried by him if he had not died, but the word of God wants us to know that all will be transfixed at the great white throne judgment. In other words, all will become motionless with horror. Every sinner, every sinner who stands before him, if it were not for Calvary, if it were not for the man of Calvary, not only will they be tried, but God is saying that every one of us would have been transfixed. We would have become motionless with horror. You stand before Jesus at the great white throne judgment and you stand there motionless. You stand there speechless. You stand there in horror. Not a word, absolutely nothing in horror. And Caiaphas is saying, if it were not for such a death and for such a person, all of us will be tried. All of us will be judged at the great white throne judgment. All of us will be transfixed, motionless with horror. But we also want to tell you, friends, that Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ was buried. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is the only savior. And friends, if you fail to repent and trust Jesus as your Savior, you are going to be raised in your sin. You are going to stand before Jesus at the great white throne judgment in your sin. And not only are you going to stand there in your sin, but he will try you and you are going to be transfixed. You are going to be there motionless and you are going to be there with horror, in horror. 
standing before this lovely person, standing before that one of whom the Bible tells us the heaven and the earth shall flee away and the heaven and the earth will be fled away and you stand before Jesus alone. No family, no friends, no fact, no, no anything. You are there alone and Jesus Christ tries you. Jesus Christ judges you. Jesus Christ casts you into the lake of fire. So we are going to be there if it were not for the death of Christ, all of us. We are going to be tried if it were not for him. We are going to be transfixed if it were not for his death, the death of one man. The Bible tells us if it were not for such a person, if it were not for such a man who died, all will be thrown into hell, all will be hurled and casted into the lake of fire. And friends, this is what the Bible is saying. This is what Caiaphas is saying. We shall all perish if he did not die. But he did die. And because he has died, you can escape the wrath of God. You can repent of your sin and trust Christ as your Savior. And if you did not do so, remember, not only are you going to be tried, not only are you going to be transfixed, but he will take you and he's completed and he will throw you, cast you, hurl you in the lake of fire and you're going to be there forever and forever and forever and forever. Friends, viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth, we are here to tell you of something expedient. One man has died for the whole world and we say hallelujah. We say thank God that one man has suffered, has bled, has died, was buried, is risen. His lovely name is Jesus. But not only so, if it were not for him, if it were not for such a death, all will be tormented in hell and the lake of fire forever. So friends, if you fail to repent, having listened to this broadcast, Moments with Truth, and as we tell you something that is expedient, something that is profitable, something that is advisable, something that is good for you, and you fail to repent and trust Christ as your Savior, we are here to tell you that you will be tormented in the lake of fire forever and forever, not for 10, 15, 20, or 30 years, for all eternity, you'll be there. But God wants to save you, that is why this one man came suffered bled and died so the word of god tells us of something expedient this is cardinal fundamental important but not only is it fundamental not only is it cardinal the death of this one man is communicable it's communicable it gives imparts conveys reveals information what is the information that it gives? Notice what the Bible tells us in verse 50. Now consider that it is experience for us that one man should die for the people. For the people. And that the whole nation perish not. There is a message that is communicated. What is the message that is communicated? What is the message that is conveyed? What is the message that is revealed? What is the information? The word of God tells us it communicates our Lord's impartiality. He is not partial. He is fair. He is not biased. Notice the Bible tells us in verse 50 that one man should die for the people. Our God is impartial. Jesus Christ has died for all. As you sit and view this broadcast, moments with truth. Somebody has died for you, not Michael. Somebody has died for you, not Caiaphas. Somebody has died for you, not the religious. The one who died for you is Jesus. And he has died for every person in Tobago. Every person in Trinidad and Tobago, every person in the Caribbean, every person in the world wide web, somebody has died for all. God is impartial. What a wonderful God we have. And so he wants to save Trinidad and Tobago. 
He wants to save the world. And that is why the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he's impartial, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He has died for the people. Notice not only does God tell us that he is impartial, but notice the importance, the significance, the weight, the dignity. His importance reveals and his importance tells us of his coming. When he visited this world, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. He visited this earth. God became man and tabernacled among us. And when Caiaphas said one man, Caiaphas was stating that God became man. He has to become man. He must be man in order for him to suffer, in order for him to bleed, in order for him to die. He must die as a man. And thank God that he visited us. He came into this world and lived perfectly, never sinned and could not have sinned. So his visit, his importance by his value, his worth. There is nobody on earth who is worthy as this lovely person. There is nobody on earth who has value like him. He is worthy. Oh, we sometimes sing, worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. This one man is worthy. And you should bow your heads and bow your hearts and receive this worthy one into your heart. But notice his virtue, his moral excellence, his beauty, his loveliness. Oh, as we look at this man, as we look at this one man, his moral excellence, internally, he was lovely. He never sinned internally. He never sinned externally. He did no sin. He knew no sin. Neither was any guy found in his mouth. That is why he, as the one man, could have died and did die. Every other man on this earth before and after, and even today, is a sinner, and we cannot die for the sinners of this world. The only one man who could have died is the one who has moral excellence, the one who, who has beauty, the one who is lovely, the one who is the God-man. But notice the validity, the soundness and sufficiency of this lovely person. Something expedient, something suitable. One man has died for the people. Thank God for that. But notice his vision. What was his perception? What was his insight? Why did he die? Notice what the Bible tells us in verse number 52 of John's Gospel chapter 11. And not for that nation only, not for the Jews only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. In other words, when the Lord Jesus Christ suffered, when he died at the place called Calvary, there was a purpose, and the purpose was to save the Jew and to save the Gentile, to save man from sin. That's the vision, to save you from your sin. One man has died. One man is at the Father's right hand, crowned with glory and with honor. And friends, we are saying to you on this broadcast, moment with, moments with truth, we are telling you something expedient. We are telling you something fitting. We are telling you something profitable, that Jesus Christ has died so that you can have life and that you can have it more abundantly. Are you going to repent and trust Christ as your savior? and be saved our hearts desire and pray to god is that you will be saved but not only does it not not only is it communi communi communicable with respect to his vision it communicates man's impurity the reason why jesus died is not because he was a sinner it's because of my sin kiaifa said he died for us 
My sins were laid upon him, says the songwriter. Jesus bore them on the tree. God who knew them, laid them on him, and believing thou art free. He died because of my impurity. He died because of your impurity. He died because you are a sinner. He died because I am a sinner. And there was no one good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let him in. Thank God for this one man. Thank God for this only man who suffered, who bled and died. But note that it, it communicates man's impalpability. In other words, not easily grasped by the mind. Who can grasp? Who can understand Calvary? Who can understand Jesus, the perfection of beauty, laying his life down for me and for you? We deserve to die. But somebody wonderful, somebody lovely took my place at the place called Calvary. Oh, the songwriter says, bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood, and every soul in Trinidad and Tobago is saved. We say, hallelujah, what a savior. One man has died for Trinidad and Tobago. One man has died for the world. Are you going to bow your heads and receive him as your savior? Or are you going to continue in your, stint, in your sin and stand before him to be tried, to be transfixed, to be tormented in hell forever? May God give you the grace. May God give you the courage to come to this lovely person, this one man, and receive him as your savior. He will give you life and give you it more abundantly. We are going to close this broadcast with a word of prayer. And while we are praying, bow your heads with us, bow your hearts with us, and receive this lovely person as your Savior and as your Lord. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come to thee at the close of another broadcast, Moments with Truth. Oh God, we thank thee for this thing that is expedient. We thank thee, Father, for this one man, this only man, who suffered, bled, died, and was buried, and is risen from the dead. His name is Jesus. He is the one who saves from sin. Father, speak to every heart. Speak to every soul who has, who have, every soul who has listened to this broadcast. Our desire is that each soul will come to him as they are, receive him as their savior, and have life and have it more abundantly. Bless thy word. Say precious souls as we give thee the honor, we give thee the praise, we give thee the glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for being with us, listening to today's message. Should you have any questions, any comments, any requests for prayer, please contact us either on the phone number that you'd have seen on the screen, or you can write us at the email address. You can even send us your request by WhatsApp We'd be happy to assist you. May God bless you. And for those who have not yet trusted Jesus as Savior, we are praying that you will take up the offer that God has given in the gospel and experience God's salvation. For those who know the Lord, may your faith be strengthened and your walk be encouraged in Him. God bless you.